The base model MacBook Air with the M1 chip is honestly such an underrated laptop. So in today's video, I'll be going over why it's a serious contender for your money if you are looking to buy a new laptop. Let's get into it. As for specs, I have the 13 inch MacBook Air in the color gold with the M1 chip. It has an eight core CPU and seven core GPU processor, 256 gigabytes of storage, Retina LED backlit display with True Tone technology, two Thunderbolt slash USB type C ports and a headphone jack. Let's talk about how impressive the battery is in this MacBook Air. I spent an entire day putting it to the test. I threw Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop at the MacBook Air, but also streaming YouTube videos and going on the internet, just doing some research, and I was just blown by the results. I made an entire video if you're interested in it, but anyways, in short, in the beginning, I started off, connected it to my monitor, again, editing on those three programs I just mentioned, and and it went from 100% to 25% in the span of three hours. So it probably would last about four hours with my monitor. Then I charged it from 25% all the way to 100%. And it took about an hour and a half. So it would probably take about two hours for a full charge if it was fully drained. Now, I edited it solely on the MacBook Air itself, again, on those programs I mentioned, but also watching YouTube videos and going on the internet. The laptop lasted about six to seven hours, which is insane because with my work laptop, which is the Lenovo ThinkPad, it will last about three to four hours before I need to charge it again. For a majority of you guys watching this video, you're not gonna be editing that intensely every single day or maybe that intense in general. And so throughout the week, when I leave my MacBook Air. I use it about three to four hours every single day, just editing, going on the internet, watching YouTube videos, and I can leave it uncharged for an entire week before I need to charge it again, which is just crazy because the base model MacBook Air is just that impressive. What's just even better is that because there is no fan in the MacBook Air, I don't experience overheating. I don't experience any loud noises. The most it really does is get really warm or maybe hot, but that's mostly it if I'm intensely editing all day. When it comes to the display, I have to say it is such a beautiful screen to look at. I never thought I would say this, but I enjoy looking at the screen. That is just something I never thought I would experience. But the MacBook Air comes with the Retina LED display with True Tone technology. And when I am just watching videos, editing, all the colors are just so vibrant, rich, and all the texts are just so clear. No detail goes unnoticed, and that is why it's such a joy to edit on this laptop or even watch videos. It's something you have to experience in person just because my camera might not really give it its true colors or do it justice. However, it's just something that I did not expect to love or really appreciate because again, I come from a 2012 MacBook Air and that is just seriously old and not up to date. If I were to be nitpicky, I would say I wish the best were thinner that would be nice to have more screen space but that's just me picking one negative thing out of the display other than that it's just a true beauty to look at this screen for those who enjoy working outside this laptop comes with 400 nits and when I was working outside with direct sunlight at it 400 nits is not enough to combat the direct sunlight you'll be able to work but it won't be a seamless experience whereas if you were against the Sun or or under shade, you are totally fine. That is just something to note if you are enjoying to work outside and experience a lot of sunlight or direct sun. Beware if you are going to be taking this outside, you are gonna see all the fingerprints. I almost freaked out when I saw it. I was like, what the heck is all of this? And I quickly had to clean it, but that's something you're gonna see if you were to work with direct sunlight. But if you are inside, 400 nits is more than enough. I have never once struggled working on the MacBook Air inside. 
As many of you guys know, a couple years back, Apple took away a lot of the ports and we are left with living that dongle life. For my other laptops, such as my ThinkPad Lenovo work laptop and my 2012 MacBook Air, they all have a lot of ports, so I've never needed to use a dongle up until I picked up the MacBook Air. I did get used to using a dongle, but for me, I'd rather not have to use a dongle. It's just something extra that is another step I do not really need to have if the laptop came with ports. And when I was at Starbucks, I had a small little square table and it was just a little cramped and I wish I didn't have to bring a dongle. And especially with spaces where let's say you're in the car doing work, you need to have that dongle. And again, it takes up more space that is kind of unnecessary if the laptop came with ports. As for the M1 chip itself, you can probably tell from this entire video, it is such a powerful chip. I barely have to wait ever when I'm putting up Adobe Premiere Pro, opening up Google Chrome, opening up anything honestly because it comes up within a matter of seconds. When I'm working on Adobe Premiere Pro, I have rarely experienced any lag, maybe just twice in the past couple of months, but that's with intensely editing for multiple days without turning it off and letting it rest so that's when I do experience lag and I need to shut it off let it rest for a couple minutes reboot it and it's just perfectly fine with the Adobe programs they did update it to run with M1 chip but in my experience it's not perfect it's just close for example when I'm screen recording and I watch it in QuickTime player it's totally fine and there are no issues but when I import it in Adobe Premiere Pro there are glitches it does get weird when I start scrolling down so that's just something I noticed and I had to find ways to fix it. Another thing is with my LG monitor, I do have a program where I can customize the monitor settings, brightness, what type of colors I want, and all of that. And it works totally fine with my 2012 MacBook Air and work laptop. However, with the M1 MacBook Air, it does not work at all. There's no update that is compatible with the M1 chip. So with my monitor, I cannot change the settings when I'm using the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. Again, that's just minor details and it's not a deal breaker. However, it does kind of suck and that's something you should keep in mind if you were to pick up the M1 chip, M1 Pro, M1 Max. Certain programs will take time to adapt to these chips. The MacBook Air is so underrated and should be a serious contender for your money, especially with how it's priced. It's about $1,000 to $1,300, depending if you're in the States or Canada. And with the M1 Pros, M1 Max, they are at least probably $500 to $1,000 more when you may not need all that power or all that processor and for me for what i've been doing this macbook has served me extremely well the only reason why i decided to go with the pro with the m1 pro is because in the future i do plan to edit on 4k footage with 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second but also i am dabbling into motion graphics and i want my laptop to be more efficient and that's why i went with that i have a friend who's a student and is in love with her laptop and they don't edit, they do work for school, they research, they watch YouTube videos and maybe edit on the side. So that is why I say it is a serious contender for your money. Seriously think about it if you are not thinking of, you know, using it for intensive purposes. Now, that was my video for the M1 MacBook Air. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully it helped you out. If it did, definitely stop that like button for me. I would totally appreciate it. However, that is it for me and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.